four, three, two, one. It was the uh, summer of 1938, and um, my best friend at that time, a chap named Roy, very bright and very handsome, was at a camp. He was a counselor at a camp during the summer in Massachusetts. His sweetheart, Lillian, likewise was at a camp about a mile away. It was the last day of camp for both camps, the boys' camp and the girls' camp. And uh, after they'd get home, of course, they'd see each other after a few days. But uh, he thought it would be cute if uh, he'd bicycle over the approximately a mile on a country road and say goodbye to her, which he did. And, uh, and on his way back on the country road, and it was getting quite close to his camp, when something happened to him, I don't know exactly whether he hit uh, something in the road or just what maybe his bicycle uh, brake failed, but he going at quite a speed down the hill, the bike veered off the road and uh, crashed into a stone wall. And uh, unfortunately, his forehead took the, took the brunt of the uh, action. He wasn't knocked unconscious, but he managed to stagger out into the road and uh, something or someone came happened to come along the road i think it was from his camp and uh, saw him uh, bleeding and uh, of course tried to get help those were the days when there there was no cell phone yet but uh, somehow or other they finally got a, an ambulance to him uh, that was the last i saw of him, although I had been in touch with him for a few months. Uh, he was in a hospital for uh, quite some time. I don't know exactly how long. But uh, when he came home, was brought home to his parents, he, uh, he wouldn't mingle socially with anyone because he wasn't the handsome boy he was. His forehead was flat, and uh, it had caused his eyes to bulge. Well, he wouldn't go out anywhere socially, and uh, I, f I felt badly about it and thought that he'd come to m my house. I was still living with my parents, and uh, he wouldn't have to worry too much about how he looks. So uh, I spoke to his sweetheart, and she spoke to him, and uh, he finally agreed to do that. Uh, when I, I also asked his sweetheart, if she, Lillian, if she'd bring a girl along so I'd have company uh, to share with the rest. And the uh, date was set one Sunday, and uh, to get to my home, they had to take the subway. Uh, everybody didn't have a car in 1938. So uh, I had, they were told me later, later. Uh, on the subway, uh, Roy thought he'd have a little fun. So uh, the girl that uh, Lillian brought along, her name was Vivian, um, and she felt she made a sacrifice because she, she had a date with someone else that day. But they shamed her into breaking the date and coming to dinner at my house. So on the ride down on the subway, uh, Roy said, you know, 
a fellow in this country only one year, he doesn't have much of an accent. She figured, well, no big deal. A little, little later, he said, uh, look, uh, when you're introduced to him, when he gets excited, he stutters, so uh, just ignore it. And she wished she hadn't broken her previous date. Well, anyway, they finally got to the house. I lived uh, with my parents on the second floor. But instead of going up the stairs together, Lillian rushed up the stairs. And when she got to my, to my folks' apartment, knocked on the door, I answered the door, and she quickly whispered, speak with an accent and stutter. Well, I, I caught on to what it was about. And uh, when, when they got up, uh, I was introduced, and I said, uh, me, 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 met you, met you uh, 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 hello. So uh, she wasn't very happy about it, but at least I didn't look as bad as uh, she was anticipating. Well, we enjoyed dinner, and uh, uh, she had a great sense of humor, Vivian. And we really had a very good time. So after dinner, uh, when, when they were leaving, I uh, told Vivian I'd like to meet her again. And uh, we set a date. And uh, that was the girl I uh, fell in love with. And uh, we s kept company for about two or three years. And we found out we were really made for each other. So uh, that's, that's how I met the girl I married. Now, I don't know how far uh, I should uh, carry this. Uh, we were married for 63 years, he uh, had a uh, hectic and adventurous life and traveled almost over the world. And uh, well, I don't know whether I should bring the sad part up as she became ill and uh, we got her to a hospital, and uh, she did, was deteriorating, and after a month, got her to another hospital, and it, it didn't help much. And finally, I, I started looking for a, a place where I could be near her instead of having to travel to get to the hospital. And after some research, I found out about Seabrook Village. And uh, I, we did set up to move here at Seabrook Village and uh, she moved right into Renaissance Gardens, and I moved into Arbor Court, so I could uh, walk to see her. And four days later, she she died. <laughs>